Hello MATLAB users. Today we're going to talk about file I.O., file input and file output. So we've talked about the fprintf statement. And fprintf actually, as you start typing it in, you can see it's actually built to work with file I.O., writing to files, or writing to the screen. So if we are just saying hello and we're printing it to the screen, it'd be nice to have the new line character there, then we can just do fprintf hello. But what if instead we want to print the word hello to a file? Well, the first thing we need to do is open a file. And we're going to open it with a command called fopen. And fopen requires the name of the file that you want to open. So this is just a test. I'll call my file test.txt. And I want to open this file for writing. So the first thing I'm passing into fopen is the name of the file. And the second is the mode. You can open files for reading, for writing, for appending. In this case, I want to write to the file. So as I hit that, um, the return value from fopen is a pointer to a file or a number that corresponds to that file. And notice that something popped up over here in my current folder that I now have a file with that name. It's completely empty. If I open it, I'm not going to actually see anything. But the file's ready to go. It's been created, and I can start putting something inside the file. So I would put something in the file with fprintf. Only instead of just passing in the string hello, I'm going to pass in the file ID. As you see, the first argument to fprintf could be a file ID. And the name of the variable you use for the file ID could be anything. It could be FID, it could be XYZ. Um, but since it is a pointer to a file or an identifier for a file, then file ID makes a lot of sense. And then we'll go ahead and print hello to the file. And I'm going to throw the new line character on at the end of the word hello. And bam. And then when you're done with writing to the file, you would close it with F close. And I will close the file ID. And now if I take a look at my file, then I have one word hello inside of that file. And we can write. Um, we can write more to that file. So fprintf, the way I've used it so far in class is it, there's one thing that you're printing, like one string or one number at a time. But let's say I have an array of maybe temperatures, so 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 75 degrees, 100 degrees. So I've got this array of temperatures. Um, I'll store it in a variable temp. And I want to print that. Well, fprintf is actually built to print out more than one thing at a time if you have a whole array of values. So if I pass in temp, which actually has four numbers, and I say print it percent %d like as integers because none of them have decimal places, then it will actually print four different lines, one for each temperature. So I could, if I have a file that's open, I'm going to open that same test file. Uh, if I have that file that's open, I can print all my temperatures to the file by passing my file ID to fprintf. And then I'll go ahead and close that file. And now I can see I have all of those temperatures printed to the file. Pretty cool. And we did that with just three lines of code. Open the file for writing, uh, print with fprintf, and then close. Uh, what if we want to read from that file? So we can, or let me actually also point out that notice that we use the same file name and w for write overrides the contents of the file. So we didn't have these four numbers added after the words hello. It completely wiped out the file. If that's not the behavior that you want, we could open the file for appending. Let me go ahead and close this. Open it for appending and then Next time we write something, um, let's just add maybe one more temperature, 101 degrees. And then we'll go ahead and close our file again. If we were opened it for appending, then we didn't lose those four temperatures, but we have our new fifth temperature at the bottom there. OK, so we've written to a file. We've written a bunch of temperatures to a file. And now we want to go ahead and read in those temperatures. So I'm going to put this in a script just so we can see all the lines of code at once. So I've learn to write to files with fprintf, I'm going to read everything in with scanf. But first I need to open my file. And just to prove that I, I can pick whatever variable name I want from my file pointer, I'm going to use f. I'm going to open up my test file 
with the temperatures in it. And instead of opening it for writing or appending, I want to open it for reading. And then I'm going to read in um, temperatures, read into an uh, array temperatures with F scan F. And I know that they're all integers, so percent %d would work. So notice it's very similar to fprintf, that we, we printed them as integers, we're going to read them in as integers, we've got a file pointer that we're using as the first argument to that function, and then I also want to display whatever I end up reading in, and close the file when we're done. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run this program. And there were five temperatures in my file. I read them in and I printed them out. Um, also, fscanf has the ability to return an extra argument, output argument, that is the count of how many things were actually read in. So if we actually looked at that variable, the count's five because there were five different um, numbers that we read in from the file. So that's a little bit of file I.O. and we'll continue with more videos. There's a bunch of MATLAB functions to help out with file input and file output.